Marcos, thank you for for being hosting this this room <laughs> for us. <laughs> and yeah. Steven, let's so start. I... That's okay. You're, you're listening right now. You're listening okay here? There? I can hear you guys. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? It's okay here, man. But let's go, man. Let's do it. Uh, I want to start asking uh, the. Ah, fuck me. What did you listen to create your songs? The influences that build Breed from Within. What was the influences that built your band? That built the band? The, the influences? Yes, the influences. Yeah, um, I, I think we draw a lot of, of inspiration from a lot of different places and, and actually from a lot of different styles of metal and then even, even outside of metal a little bit which is, is cool because I think uh, it ends up making something that's like completely our own and, and it is totally drawn from, from inspiration. Uh, I know one of, so Gunzi tends to write a lot of the, a lot of the instrumental part of, of our music and he's massively influenced by bands like Decapitated, um, Lamb of God, um, I believe Deftones are, 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 are quite a big influence for, for him as well. Um, but there are there are loads of bands. Gojira is another big one for for all of us, definitely. Um, especially with their since since Magma, um, when they kind of, you know, ex exploded. Um, we we had yes. already been fans for years, but particularly their their new music, we're a massive fan of the the way that they put songs together. Um, but yeah, there's there's so many different places that we that we draw inspiration from, and I think that it. It ends up just becoming this big amalgamation of all of our favorite bands with a little bit of us in there too. Nice, nice. Uh, let's uh, for, uh, just a moment uh, before entering this question. Stephen Jones, are you the Mr. Jones from Calling Crows? From what? From Calling Crows, the band. Uh, do you remember the song? Mrs. Jones, lend me. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. That's me. All right. Yep. They were talking about me. <laughs> no, sorry. Okay. Sorry for this joke, but let's start, let's enter in Shrine now, man. I, I have listened to the three singles that you released at Fresh and Stone, Stand Down and Levitate. And I want to talk about Levitate because when I heard this single, I said, whoa. That's a huge, huge work of guitars that, I, that we have here. And then you release it, uh, Guitar Playthrough. And when I saw it, I said, fuck that, man. That's insane, man. How did you manage it? <laughs> because I was imagining that you were doing all that stuff and then hanging and, and then had banging. So how, man? <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. I mean, uh, me and me and Gunzi have been playing guitar for for a long time, man. And um, he's he's crazy about um, intricate riffs and making making things like as interesting as, as they can be, which ends up being, you know, really hard for us. <laughs> so I'm not, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's, def it's not it's not easy, man. And I think uh, I, th I think in in the playthrough. Um, it, it probably it probably looks easier than than it actually is, um, but yeah, we're not uh, we're not we're not we're, we're not we're not like um, I, I wouldn't consider us amazing guitarists. Like to be honest, like we're both rhythm rhythm players, and uh, we we look up to a lot of lead players. Um, you know, like dudes who can who can shred. Like neither me or Gunzi are shredders. We're we're mainly rhythm rhythm players with like. You know, a bit more focus on our right hand and stuff, but yeah, like this new this new album has a few riffs on it that are a real workout, a real workout. Okay, uh, and the album, uh, they are more uh, because nowadays you are doing something like a a more modern death metal and metalcore stuff. Is Shrine based on these on these grounds, or we can imagine something more? open-minded from the, from the, from within yeah yeah I, I definitely i think one of the things that makes shrine my favorite album that we've done yet is that it touches on way more ground than any album that we've done before i think there's elements of different styles of metal 
probably enough that there's something on this album for everyone. I, I genuinely believe that. I think there are moments on this album that will anybody, any metal fan will enjoy. Um, and I, I don't mean that the whole album, I think that. I just think that there's so many different things on the album uh, across the the entire running order that, you know, there's something for everybody on there. Um, and we, we do get a lot of sort of are you metalcore, deathcore, whatever sort of stuff. And um, but I, I did an interview the other day with with someone who, who put it in a really a really cool way. They were like, I don't think you guys are any of those. I think you're all of those. And that's one of the things that makes the band like a bit different and, you know, something that hopefully a lot of people are going to enjoy. OK, nice. And now, uh, continuing on this album, Shrine, can you explain why this name and the cover art is very beautiful? Then the, does this cover art and the name that they're connected, can you explain that for us, please? Yeah, sure. Um, it's, it's, it's an interesting one because the album isn't a concept album. There's not one overriding theme that runs through the entire thing. These are This is a collection of... of 11, 12 songs, 12 songs, um, that all have their own meaning, that are all stories in, in their own. Um, and I think when, when it got to late in the sort of album writing and recording process, I think we looked at it more from a point of where are we right now as a band? Like what situation are we in? How do we feel as a band? And sort of what have we been through to, to get to this point? Um, so when, when we released Era, it was our first album in a lot of years. I think the, I think it was the first album in five years. And uh, yes. there had been a lineup change. I'm the new guy, basically. There had been a lineup change and the music had totally changed from what it was before then. So that was similar in the sense that it was called Era. You know, it's a, it's a new era for the band, like welcoming that in. With Fracture, um, we, we went through some, some really tough years um, just before Era and then leading up to Fracture. And Fracture was a kind of, reflection of how we felt in that moment where we were as individuals and shrine is like so we've, we've just signed to to nuclear blast we've got an amazing team behind us we're in a much better place as individuals and as a band and when we were looking through the album and all of the subjects that are talked about you, you know we were just kind of like i think at this point we need an album that's just that's positive that's like here's here's where we are and we want to kind of like you know, celebrate ourselves and celebrate what we managed to get through to be where we are now. Um, so it's kind of as I, I like to look at it as a shrine, like to ourselves, to the to the sort of journey that we've been on as individuals and as musicians in the last six or seven years. It has been really crazy, and uh, it's nice to have this album that I believe is like our strongest collection of songs to date, and just stamp it as like a shrine to our strength and perseverance to get through pretty much anything that comes at us and still be able to like, you know, enjoy music, write music and for it to be this massive, it's like the biggest part of all of our lives is being in this band, you know? So um, we take it very seriously. And I think it was a, it was a good decision to be like, you know, these 12 songs are a shrine to, to bleed from within. Okay, nice. It's good to hear that. So uh, I think when you say that these all can be referred to, to, to the human being or, or for everyone to be better to, to themselves, even you're passing through some bad times. Is that, that, that correct to say this? Yes, that is absolutely what it is. Yes. Um, and on a personal <laughs> level, it's on a personal level, it's us, you know, but for people listening, I definitely think you can uh -huh. draw some strength from listening to the messages that we're trying to convey with the lyrics and with the songs themselves. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's about perseverance and, uh, you know, celebrating yourself and the journey that you've been on. Okay, so then now talking about for you in a personal level, uh, can you expect uh, what do you, what, uh, what is the expectations that you are that you have for uh, for this album? The public listen to this. Can, uh, do you ex what did, what do you most expect from the from from your audience? From from what was that? What was the last bit? From your audience, for your, for the guys that audience, are, cool. is always following you, yes. Yeah. Um. I I expect that people are gonna. Yes. Like what it. do you expect? <laughs> um, I hope. Yeah, so I hope it's a level, you know, because I, I I do think that every musician that is releasing something new is 
it's such a pressure for some things that oh my god what are you thinking about it or you don't think about it yeah no i i, I totally agree um particularly with the most <laughs> recent single uh flesh and stone we 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 went in a really different direction with that song and I had a lot of sort of anxiety about that song coming out. It was I was also I was looking forward to it. I was excited. I was anticipating <laughs> it. But there was a there was an element of anxiety, like you know, Bleed from within. I've spent however many years sort of establishing our sound, and then with Flesh and Stone, yes. it's like, hey, curveball. You know, this is totally different from anything <laughs> I've ever done. You know, and and may ever do. So hope you like it. You know, and, and the cool thing is, is that that song in terms of like YouTube views is the has been the second most successful sort of single uh, and it only came out a month ago um which, sorry three weeks ago so it's, it's really cool to see that people are embracing the fact that we can expand and we can try new things and we can experiment as musicians and people are still going to enjoy it because at the end of the day I, I don't think we would put something out that we don't fully believe in but we definitely wouldn't you know unless we had full belief and you know this song we all like it we've worked really hard at it and we're proud to put it out that song won't see the light of day so every every song on, on this album is stuff that we're mega proud of um we've definitely expanded the sound and i am i'm curious to see what what people are going to think i think i expect that existing bleed from within fans will will dig it and i hope that new bleed from within listeners will be able to be like okay cool this band can do a bunch of different things and that's cool and hopefully get on board Okay, <laughs> I got it. Man, um, starting to get over, uh, you have plans of touring, okay? That's normal for everyone, that you want to show shrine to the world, right? Yeah. South America, it is included in your plans? Is it in our plans? South America. Yeah, like to tour? Yeah, tour here, through Brazil and Colombia, Ecuador. Chile, yeah, dude, Argentina. Dude, we would we would love to. We would absolutely love to. And we always have wanted to. The band actually, they had a Mexican tour booked in 2012. And then it was like the day before they were flying, they, they couldn't they couldn't make it happen for, for like multiple reasons. Everything just fell apart. Um so the guys I, I'm I've only been a member of the band for six years. Um so that was a, a long time before I joined. But ever since yes. I've joined, the guys, the guys have always wanted to go to South America. It's still somewhere that we want to go. There just doesn't seem to be much opportunity for us yet. Like I don't, for, for as long as I've been in the band, I've never seen a tour offer for South America. And like, if we don't get a tour offer, we can't play there. So you know, as much as we want <laughs> to come, we, someone needs to make it happen. That's not us, you know. So it's like we're just kind of waiting around. Oh, like, yes. come on. I think that's someone that is listening to our. Trash that will make it happen, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we don't even have we don't even have a, a South American agent or anything, you know. Like, I I don't know who no. you would speak to to be like, dude, let's let's make a tour in South America. Like, how how do you make? I don't know how you make that happen, you know. So I'm just I'm I'm just hoping one day it'll happen, you know, because we know that <laughs> a lot of people a lot of people in in Brazil and in Colombia, like you say, and Argentina, we get a lot of messages still from Mexico. Like people, people want to see the band there, and we want to come. So yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, with Shrine, we will we will be able to tour. It will happen. Yeah, man. It will so. We are crossing fingers here. Yeah, man. <laughs> yes, Jude. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I will say I will ask you if you can send a message to Headbangers Brazil. That is the the site that I write for. Okay. Thank you yeah. so much, so much for your time. So send us a message right now. It's you. It's all with you, Stephen Jones. <laughs> awesome, yeah. Hey, Headbangers Brazil, thank you so much for checking out Bleed From Within. Hope you enjoy the new album, Shrine, which is out on June the 3rd. It's been awesome, Augusto. Thank you for talking to me. Um, yeah, hopefully see you there off the back of this album. Okay, man. Thank you a lot, Marcos. Thanks a lot, man. Bye-bye. Good, thank you for your time. I'm sorry again, I was late. I appreciate it. Have an awesome uh, day. No problem.